and Pwn Your Home is a two-stage attack that leverages bugs in both Apple's HomeKit and iMessage. Today, we are facing an unprecedented array of data breaches, hacking attempts, and surges in digital crime. Why is there such a widespread amount and how little is noticed in our everyday lives? Malware, dark sites, brute forcing, zero days, script kitties, and nation state hackers are all on the rise. Learn more about the threats we face and gain a bit more knowledge than yesterday. Hey everyone, another episode of Exploit Brokers is coming to you now. Hey guys, it's Louder with another episode of Exploit Brokers. So today we're going to be talking about zero-click iPhone exploits. Specifically, in an article by darkreading.com, zero-click iPhone exploit drops Pegasus spyware on exiled Russian journalists. So, let's jump into this. The subline of that is, the exploit is one of the many that government and intelligence agencies have to infect target devices with the notorious surveillance tool. So, to give a bit of context before we start diving into this article, what is Pegasus? Although it sounds like I'm talking about the mythological horse, Pegasus is actually a software by the NSO group, which is essentially a remote access trojan, but beefed up, right? So a remote access trojan is a piece of software that you can install on a victim or target machine that allows you to take over the machine and do anything and everything, right? You have full and complete control. And the Pegasus spyware, the software that spies on you, is essentially that, but specifically for mobile devices. So the first paragraph says, A report this week about Pegasus spyware showing up on an iPhone belonging to award-winning to award-winning Russian journalist Galina Timchenko has highlighted again the seemingly myriad ways that government and law enforcement agencies appear to have to deliver the odious surveillance tool on target devices. So this has been a very ongoing and consistent and persistent thing where multiple government agencies, not just US government agencies, but agencies around the world are using Pegasus very, very aggressively. They're finding ways to get this on target devices and not just for bad guys. I am all for using good things to catch bad people. No, this is specifically trying to target journalists and dissidents, and we'll get to that. The article continues, Timchenko is an exiled Russian investigative journalist and co-founder of Medusa, a Russian and English language news site headquartered in Riga, Latvia. On June 22nd, Apple sent Timchenko a threat notification that warned her that her device is likely the target of a state-sponsored attack. Apple earlier this year rolled out the spyware threat notification, which are designed specifically to assist users that the company determines are being individually targeted because of what they do. Apple rolled out a mechanism that allows Apple devices and Apple to tell individuals, hey, it appears that your device is being targeted by the spyware. That's a very important and good move on Apple because it gives some of that detection power back into the individuals. Now, the article does say that Medusa's technical director, the one who's being targeted, did reach out to the University of Toronto Citizen Lab to help her understand what's going on. It is not very simple and it's not easy it's not very easy to just open up your phone and be able to determine, hey, this spyware, this app, this malicious thing is on there. Not even a lot of, not even a lot of antiviruses can do that. It is very specialized. You have to do forensics. You have to pull artifacts, logs. You have to do an investigation into this device. It's not just as simple as run Norton antivirus or something of the sort. She took it to a company known as Citizen Lab, which is the University of Toronto Citizen Lab. They are researchers that kind of dive into this and try to do investigative. They were actually able to find out. So between them and Access Now, a nonprofit that advocates for human rights, they were able to find out, hey, there was something going on and they figured out that she was exploited using a zero click exploit known as Pwn Your Home. So zero click exploits are some of the scariest things because you don't do anything, thus the name zero click. An exploit is anytime that you can use a bug to gain something, whether it's access on a system, information leak, indirect object reference, or in this case, remote code execution that allows them to install Pegasus. And Pwn Your Home is a two-stage attack that leverages bugs in both Apple's HomeKit and iMessage. There's a few like that, but the one she was targeted by was specifically the Pwn Your Home. Pwn Your Home is one of the three iOS 15 and iOS 16 zero-click exploits 
that Citizen Lab previously determined NSO Group's clients to have used in 2022 to draw Pegasus on target iPhones. The two-phase zero-click exploit first targets the HomeKit smart home functionality built into iPhones and then uses the iMessage process to essentially breach device protections and enable Pegasus delivery on it. Now, a lot of Apple stuff has sandbox functionality where a lot of the apps will run segmented from one another. So a sandbox breach essentially means you bypass those protections, which is kind of what this is alluding to. It's using one exploit to try to exploit something else to bypass all of Apple's security and install Pegasus. Now, these are not your run of the mill viruses. This is not your run of the mill thing that you can pick up at a cyber forum. Any zero click exploits run for millions upon millions of dollars if they're good, effective and zero, right? Zero day. That means no one knows about them. No one can actually patch them because no one's found them. And a lot of government agencies, a lot of these entities pay the NSO a lot of money to get Pegasus. And these zero click exploits are the way that you guarantee you can infect a target device, regardless of who that is. So the article does highlight as well that the two other exploits that Citizen Lab uncovered were Find My Pwn, a two phase exploit that targets the iPhone's Find My feature and the iMessage functionality combined and Latent Image, another one that exploits the iPhone's Find My feature as well. And the reason this is important is a lot of zero click exploits, based off what I know, rely on some sort of communication into the device. You can't necessarily do a zero click on say Photos app because that involves a user generally opening something up. Could you get there? Maybe. But as a general rule of thumb, there's a lot of apps that the user needs to interface with, right? But when you talk about iMessage, when you talk about the phone app, they're already looking for incoming messages. They get incoming messages, they parse them and they do stuff with them. So if you find a bug in iMessage, you are essentially given an open door where if I can send a payload into this open door that can affect the phone, I don't need you to do anything. The power of Pegasus and zero click exploits combined are so powerful and so concerning, right? Uh, a lot of the security community is very concerned. A lot of people are concerned because this is being used against journalists, dissidents, and people that are not necessarily the bad guys in the situation. Moving on, the exploits, and I'm reading from this, the exploits are among a growing number targeting iPhone users. Just earlier this month, Citizen Lab reported finding a threat actor chaining together two no-click zero-day vulnerabilities in iOS 16.6 to deliver Pegasus. This was being targeted this was being tracked as Blast Pass, describing it as enabling Pegasus delivery without any user interaction and urge everyone to immediately update their devices. So if you ever get those critical iOS patches, Android patches, Windows patches, a lot of those times those are mitigating zero days or bugs that were found and reported or just found by somebody and they're beginning to be patched. Developers only have so much time from when they know to when they can patch it. You gotta go as quick as possible because every minute, every second that's spent with that software not patched is more targets that the users can pretty much hit. And the problem is even once you roll out that patch, as any software developer can tell you, just because they deploy out that patch, unless they control the full infrastructure themselves, which in the case of an iPhone, they don't, they can send a notification out to the device, but it's up to the user generally to accept the update and install it, then there's still even time from there where once the developer patches it and it gets through testing and they're happy about it and it deploys, the user still has to accept and install. And that just leaves for even more exploitation, especially with zero clicks where you don't got to do anything. So let's keep going. Medusa, which also posted a report on the incident Wednesday, described the spyware on Timchenko's iPhone as likely having allowed the perpetrator to access everything on her device. Again, going back to rats, and spyware like this generally try to get full access to everything. Your phone is an open book. Uh, they say this included corporate passwords, correspondence, the names of Medusa staff, bank account details, and most concerningly, the identities of those collaborating with the news site who live in Russia. They got everything, the reported quoted Medusa's editor-in-chief, Ivan Kolpakov, as saying everything they wanted. So because Pegasus is so powerful and it ingrains itself and it has so much power on the device, 
they got lists, details, bank accounts, staff, and this from an offensive point from a someone who's attacking is pretty much what they want. You want to be able to get data that you can later use either against the target to pivot to target other people until you can get what you want or just to wreak havoc and make the target's life bad or to take down a target. And that's what a lot of this is for. What's interesting is the article even talks about how critics have heavily criticized it. And sure enough, back in 2021, there was a leaked database of more than 50,000 phone numbers. The biggest concern is that there was 180 journalists from countries like India, Hungary, and Mexico. And the database also contained phone numbers. I'm, I'm paraphrasing and reading at the same time. The database also contained phone numbers belonging to numerous human rights activists, lawyers, union leaders, doctors, politicians, and diplomats. So that's where the problem in this lies, is that you have a lot of agencies and government agencies that are using this to target bad guys. And you could see that as being, okay, that's allowable because it helps the good guys catch the bad guys. But when you have countries, nation states, and agencies targeting doctors, lawyers, politicians, dissidents, human right activists, and things like that, that's where it becomes scary. That's where it goes into the area of like 1984, the book, right? You cannot have full dictator-like authority over the people because then that's where people are not happy with it. It becomes a matter of privacy and security more than it does trying to do the right thing. The NSO group has this tool and they sell it and agencies buy it. But the reason why they buy it and the reason they're using it can easily become a blurred line. They should be catching the bad guys. They should not be going after journalists. You should not have these nations who are going to crack down on dissidents. They shouldn't be going after activists. There is a time and a place for this kind of software. There is a time and a place for this kind of thing. There is a kind of there is a time and a place for this kind of thing. Catching the bad guys is good. But when you make everybody the bad guy, that's bad. So guys, I want to thank you for tuning in into this episode of Exploit Brokers. I thought this article and this story was really interesting and I'm glad I got to bring it to you. So next time you hear about Pegasus or zero-click exploits, you're a little bit more informed. This is Laudo signing off. I'll see you in the next one.